Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharallah. Call Holoyim La Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Haracha Kodash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwaf that's keeping the faith in the work. Shall keep at it. This is your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, and verse 9. It says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. All right. All right, so... Same thing that's going on today is the same thing that happened in in the past. And there is no new thing on this earth, man. Right? Um, this is the book of uh, Jeremiah, uh, chapter twenty eight and verse eight. It says, "The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence." Right, so the same thing that's going on today, even with the men of the Lord, it's the same thing that has been going on in times past. Right? As far as the daughter of Babylon goes, it has that title daughter of Babylon for a reason. Because it carries on the traditions of it of the kingdoms of the past. Right? This is spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt, right, spiritual Babylon. Everything about this place is peaked from the past right this is the um that beast that received that wound and was healed that's spoken of in the book of revelation right and the same way that beast fell in the past it's gonna fall again but this time ain't gonna be no healing right um let me see hmm This is Jeremiah, um, chapter 51, and verse 7. It says, Babylon had been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. All right. So this place ain't going to be healed after the destruction. The prophets have been prophesying and the destruction is soon to come. All right. So before I show this video, I read this. This is on. Um, Copyright Disclaimer, Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, um, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a permitted by copyright statute right, that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So I'm implementing that. So with that, I'm going to let this video play and I'll be back. There's no, nothing in history that shows us that what we're doing right now is working. Like if you go back to Greek times. Yeah. Here we go. Um where the men were really robust and really uh, sculpted out, right? Like this is... You're not talking about the Greeks who were having sex with each other, the guys no, not in the, no, the bathhouses. No, 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 no. You're talking about the, the manly yeah, guys. Yeah, like, one of them was the nurturer. Well, well, so, so listen, like, so there was proof that when our society started to 
lose gender mm-hmm. or that they would become more like noodles. That's like a quote from Camila, <laughs> Camila Pagilia, Pagilia. And she's saying you can see it in the artwork. So you would see these sculptures and then you would see the guys that are just like this. Like mm-hmm. they were becoming more feminine and that's when the society collapsed. Ooh, so that's why that's what we're, right there. that's why what we're doing right now we're repeating history, but people don't see it like that because we're used to, or we think about it and we're like, oh, technology, we see it through social media. Mm-hmm. We're not looking at artwork. They don't even have art, certain art history courses in universities. It's like they're trying to get rid of it. That's a really great point. Well, the, uh, the, the, the conflict right here is between innate evolved gender roles like you were saying a hunter gatherer mm-hmm. tribes on you know back on the sub-saharan african mm-hmm. savanna right uh you know hunter and gathering uh, men there was division of labor right that men would go out and hunt that that's what made them sexy that's why they're built for combat that's why we you know we go out and run down the gazelle or the woolly mammoth or whatever and women are back there because women are the vulnerable sex and women are, or men are the disposable sex meaning that we're going to die more in in more greater no- attrition rate for men is is going to be a lot more than there is for women. We can look at this and we can see the proof of this in genomic records right now. So if you go back 8,000 years, you'll find that one man for every 17 women reproduced. Yeah. All right, so I saw that clip I want. She pretty much, or they pretty much brought out the point. When you start to see society's men become effeminate, that society collapse. The reason for that is as much as women want to say they don't need a man, and as much as women want to say that we that they are equal to men, and as much as women want to be empowered, men hold down societies. Men are the soldiers. Men are the individuals building, literally building, hands on dirt, hands on bricks, hands on hammers and chisels, building society. Men are the individuals that are protecting society. So when that role is switched, right, it has no choice but to fall. And like she said, we, we if you study history, if you if you pay attention at all to history, it tells you that, right? And this place is doing the exact same thing as its predecessor. It is doing the exact same things as the societies before it. All right? This place is done. Babylon is done, man. Man, look, Babylon is done. <laughs> like, for real. It's the book of um, Jeremiah, chapter 50. And um, verse 23, it says, How is the hammer? Of the whole earth cut asunder and broken. How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against Yahweh. These people don't even understand that they society done. They're not aware of it. Right? In their mind, this is a, a quote unquote liberal society and forward thinking and all inclusive and you know um this is the future of the world and they making moves for a new world and so forth and so on. Not understanding that you are going to the same end as Egypt, same end as Greece, same end as Babel and Babylon, the same end as Rome. But this time is gonna be permanent. Ain't going to be no society that gets built up later on and um, picks up the same traits as, you know, the, the societies before it. All right. Um, matter of fact, let me see. It's a lot. One second. All right. So like this Isaiah 14 and 21, it says, prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Right? For I will rise up against them, said Yahweh of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, said Yahweh. 
right? It is this is this is the wicked's last stand. This is the the wicked's last time for wickedness, right? And the Most High is is, is bringing it to pass. Front and center this week spotlights a military training instructor at Joint Base San Antonio who's making history in many ways. That military training instructor not only serving our country by training the best to be the best in the U.S. Air Force, but also serving as a beacon of hope and inspiration to so many. Our Jonathan Cotto brings us a story of the first transgender military training instructor in the Air Force. <laughs> Brandon Rodriguez is a military training instructor for the 321st Training Squadron at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland and has been serving for over a decade. I just hit 15 years uh, last month, June 13th of 2007. Serving as a military training instructor, a lifelong goal. This is something that I was fighting for for about six years and I finally, finally got here, so this means a lot to me. And it means a lot because... I enlisted as a female um, and I did my first... I want to say my first 10 years-ish as a female. A San Antonio native, Brandon was born Brandy Rodriguez and formed part of an old-school, traditional, loving Catholic family as the youngest of five. I knew that I was not who I was and I was born as a female, so making that uh, determination as a very young child put me in a, a mental space that wasn't conducive to a childhood life. When I came out to my team, I had some confidence. I could show people that I am fit to serve. I can be successful. Not only can I be successful, I can be better than I was before when I was pretending to be something I wasn't. It's been over a year since we first met Staff Sergeant Jessica Hout, when she became one of the first soldiers to test out the US military's new policy that trans troops can serve openly. How did it go? <laughs> Went actually great. Sort of like, hey, you know, I've been kind of figuring stuff out for myself over the past few months and went right to it and was like, hey, I'm, I'm transgender and I am going to transition. The military's previous policy towards trans people was pretty much, if you come out, you can get kicked out. It was also quite literally built around things tweeted by former President Trump. Company, team, up to you, Trump. The Department of Defense is estimated to be one of the country's biggest employers of trans people. So allowing trans soldiers to serve openly was a dramatic step forward. But one year after the policy was laid out, the experiences of people within the military have been much more complicated. Did you get any negative reactions? I feel like there was a lot of men that I worked with who were just kind of like uncomfortable at first. That was kind of the general air. You could feel that? I could feel like they just kind of like looked down like... Do you think the military is doing enough for trans soldiers? No. Outside of the military, we are doing everything we can to try and get rid of all the barriers and gatekeeping that has occurred in trans health. And I feel like in the military, it's we still have those same barriers requiring a brigade commander to approve my medical treatment plan, requiring a medical treatment plan that has to, you know, in reality, that's quite a violation of some medical privacy. Quite a violation of some medical privacy. Every aspect of a soldier's transition has to be approved by the chain of command, from hair length to hormone therapy. All right, let me go back to um, Jeremiah. Chapter 50 and uh, verse 25 it says, Yahweh hath opened his armory and hath brought forth the weapons of his indign indignation, for this is the work of Yahweh, power of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. All right? That's why we're seeing all of this um, nation against nation activity cranking up. And it just expands more and more and more. The more I hear, the more I hear about news of different countries that get that get involved with um, different wars, and all of it basically coming under the same umbrella of the daughter of Babylon and Russia, or the daughter of Babylon and, and um, basically Asia, right? Which, like I said, 
which is the truth, which just means East. Asia simply means East. Right? But the Most High is opening up his armory. Right? And, and basically attacking the daughter of Babylon from all angles. Right? Verse 26 says, Come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. And that's the end result of this place. Right? So I ended with that. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shara Tazah, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Holoyim La Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Harakakodash, Shalom Yashallah.